Hello, everyone. My name is Alice Bull. I run the membership group at scraphappy.org. I'm so happy that you're joining me for Scrapbook Live today. And it is my birthday. So I am feeling like an extra special happy vibe in the air, as you can see with my little flashy happy birthday sign. So thank you. I'm seeing like all the comments coming in. You guys are so sweet. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you. I am 45 years old this year and I'm just really um, in a good place. So it is really, really good. So thank you for being here for my impromptu party. <laughs> We're going to be scrapbooking. It's not all about birthdays. It, this is actually not a birthday kit that I have to work with today. And I will be actually doing something that is birthday related, though, on one of my pages that I'll do. And then we're going to see, I think my second page, if we get there, is going to be a little crazy. And I'm like, oh, I'm a little almost intimidated by that one. Maybe I should be starting there, but we're not. So it is what it is. We're going to be going there. So welcome. Um, we are going to be hanging out as I scrapbook here today. Um, later on, I hope that you will join me for some show and tell so you can show me what you're working on today or something that you've been working on recently. Uh, we've had some shares last month with some people working on cards and Christmas cards even. I'm like, oh, you guys are way too organized and um, scrapbook pages. And right now we have a load challenge going on within our Scrap Happy community. We are doing a layout a day all through the month of um through the month of October, inspired by the um, Motown Memories. We're calling it Motown Memories. And I am so excited to be doing Motown Memories. Um, hold on, I got to pull something up here. Maybe I can share a little bit of stuff uh, with this. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, we're doing Motown Memories. And so today, it's about Diana Ross and the Supremes. So I was like, what a fun day. Um, and so we're gonna talk about something um, related to, to love. That's why I wanted to scrap up this other one first and that way I'll get my load layout done. Okay, so I'm gonna share something with you. It is the page where we talk about the load so you can see what I see. So I'll give you a little peek behind the scenes if you're not a Scrap Happy member. If you're Scrap Happy, you've seen this already. It's all good. Um, okay, so yeah, this one here, okay. So here we are, this load in October is by the members for the members. So Scrap Happy members actually got together and helped me create this load. We don't have daily videos like we do in February and May, uh, but we do have some good stories. So this is all about Motown. Today we're talking about Diana Ross and the Supremes. So our story is to talk about success. The story prompt is to talk about success, something that was a hit in your life. And for a technique prompt, it says to use three photos. So I'm not gonna be doing that on my layout today because you know, those are just suggestions. <laughs> um, the thing about load is you don't have to use the load prompts. It's just something there to support you. I have one photo. I love that one photo. I'm just gonna use that. Um, so the background information is the Supremes were an American female singing group and the premier act of Motown records during the 1960s. They were the most commercially successful of Motown's acts and the most successful American vocal group with 12 number one singles on the Billboard 100 list like oh my gosh the billboard hot 100 at their peak in the mid 1960s the supremes rivaled the beatles in worldwide popularity that's saying something because man when we studied the beatles it was like oh <laughs> um florence ballard mary wilson diana ross and betty mcclown the original group were all from brewster douglas public housing project in detroit they formed the primettes a sister group to the male singing group the primes and then Barbara Martin replaced McLown in 1960. The group signed with Motown the next year. They actually tried signing with Motown for a while, but because they were still in high school, they didn't get signed. So even more background story here. Um, 
So they were signed on to Motown Records as the Supremes. Martin left the group in early 1962 to start a family. Ross Ballard and Wilson carried on as a trio. During the mid-60s, they achieved mainstream success with Diana Ross as a lead singer and Holland Dozier Holland, super songwriting team and production team. Um, they wrote so many of the songs that you love from that Motown era. It is crazy. I guarantee if you love Motown songs, you love those songwriters. They're amazing. Uh, in 67, Motown president Barry Gordy renamed the group Diana Ross and the Supremes, replaced Ballard with Cindy Birdsong. In 1970, uh, Diana Ross left to pursue her solo, solo career and re was replaced by Gene Terrell. The group reverted to being the Supremes again. If you look at the history of bands, there's like a lot of stuff all over the place. Um, but here's some of the stuff. In the spring of 64, the Supremes recorded the single, Where Did Our Love Go? The song was originally intended for the Marvelettes, and they rejected it. And the Supremes actually didn't like the song. Okay, I see I got spelling error there. Um, the producers coerced them into recording it. In August of 64, it became their first number one hit on the U.S. pop charts. And then they kind of liked it more. <laughs> like that's what it said. And then they liked it a lot more. This was followed by four consecutive U.S. number one hits. Baby Love, Come See About Me, Stop in the Name of Love, and Back in My Arms Again. And um, our feature designer today, because we have a feature designer, was Kathy McElfresh. And she was excited about the Motown theme of this load, but so thrilled to get the Diana Ross and the Supremes prompt. I've scrapped the story of how that night went, but this prompt is about success. And my college newspaper experience is definitely one of my greatest hits. See how she brought that back to the prompt? Oh, so sneaky. <laughs> I had the audacity to apply for the editorship of the campus newspaper as a freshman. I didn't get the gig, but then I did get noticed, was asked to join the staff, given plum assignments like this one, covering the concert and interviewing Diana Ross and the Supremes and their opening act, The Loving Spoonful. Like, how cool is this? I'm like, she's my friend. I know her. She did this. <laughs> For the technique prompt, I've used three photos, two snagged from the web and one from taken that magical night in 1965 when Joe Butler, the spoonful drummer, tried on my glasses. I was studying for a calculus test the next day and he'd used the same text when studying engineering. Who knew? I've used scraps from Vicki Booten's color study because the colors look so good against a black background and a couple of the patterns are starry, which seemed appropriate. So Kathy actually has a video on her YouTube channel today. So if you want to check out the Scrappy Kathy, that's Kathy with K, um, Scrappy Kathy YouTube channel, check out her post and she will have this, a video of her making her gorgeous layout. And just look at her with like, Oh, I just, I was so excited. So I love that she included both of the groups that she got to interview. She's got the picture of herself with the one guy. And then we have more info about stuff. And today for anybody that missed the Scrap Happy, maybe not playing along every day with the prompts or just didn't get to see today's prompts, there is a uh, prize alert today. So don't miss that because you can go and enter and it's like a fabulous prize. So, um, okay, we're going to stop that share. Thank you. I, I'm seeing all the happy birthday comments. You guys are so sweet. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we're here at a scrapbook. That is my inspiration for today. Like I said, I only have one photo, but it's so sweet. It's so good. And I feel it's really a hit because it's something that I think I've done so good in my life. Um, every year with my kids, when they have their birthday, I like to sit them down and look through some of their um, scrapbooks or baby albums or something like that. I like to look through old pictures of them with them. And it's just one of the great ways to kind of say, like, look at all the cool things I documented about your life in these scrapbooks, which, which are awesome. And uh, when I was looking at some photos with my son on his birthday, which was just a week ago, um, my husband took a picture of us. Like I'm like literally in my pajamas. So here I'm just looking at my pajamas. <laughs> um, but yeah, he took a picture of us sitting there on the couch looking at the pictures. 
And I was just so excited to have that. I feel that that's like one of the coolest things that we do every year on a birthday. Like, yes, we have cake. We always make, well, almost always make angel food cake, which we love. We make a kind of icing called butterfly icing, which is amazing. And I'm going to be sharing the recipe on my Instagram a little bit after this. Um, I grabbed my my little uh, card that has the recipe on it because it's like the most amazing icing for an angel food cake. So that's coming up. But now we're gonna do some scrapbooking and I'm gonna scrapbook this picture and my my big hit. The photo is so sweet, thank you. I know, isn't it so fun? Honestly, um, do that. Like when, it is just such a good timing, right? Like the, it's a day all about your kid and if you have a scrapbook about your kid, well, that's just such good timing you know, you could do it. Um, my husband's book would be a, a shorter look, but honestly, that's like more like his attention span. So I'll have to try that on his birthday too. Look, look, look at the pages I made of you. <laughs> okay. I have a fabulous kit from the scrap room to play with, and I'm going to be giving a free kit away a little bit later. So, um, I'm going to show you what's in my kit and, um, then I'll get started on the scrap in. I'm actually not sure which part we're going to use. So I'm kind of excited by this. Um, first things first, in my kit, I always get a little sample of coffee. And this one is caramel chai. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it smells so good. I'm like, why didn't I make coffee? <laughs> why did I not make coffee? I love having coffee. Um, so I don't know this, um, uh, let's see here. Oh, I saw a message coming in. Somebody needed a password. My password's always happy. That way it's easy to remember. <laughs> um, but I put it on the, on the invite. So hopefully they found it. I'm not sure who sent the message. Okay. I'm going to turn this camera. Actually, I just tested it and my camera actually worked. So this is the one that doesn't bounce all over the place and try to autofocus every five seconds. So thank goodness for that. You didn't even need to type the password. Yay. <laughs> yeah. I, I give you the code with the password or I give you like the link and depending on which way you're accessing it, like either one seems to work pretty good. Okay, we are going to share the screen via the cable. It worked two seconds ago, so it's gonna work again, right? Holding my breath. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes, it's working, hooray. Okay, let's see. Can we bring this a little bit more this way? Maybe, maybe not, okay. Fantastic. So the kit that I get from the scrap room, you can find their information at scrap-room.com um, is a flavors of the month. So there are four mini kits in here, which I love. And I also get an add-on embellishment kit. So I get a few extra goodies, extra charge for that, but totally worth it. Um, also with your kits, you do get a sketch and you get um, a cut file, the October cut file. Look how cute it is. Isn't that nice? It's like a trick or treat one. So super fun. Um, that's not what I needed for today. Um, but that is part of the kit. And then you get all the stuff. So, and if you choose to get the coffee, you can opt out of the coffee. If you're like, oh my gosh, I would not want my stuff smelling like coffee or I don't like coffee at all. Uh, that would be no good to me. So you can totally opt out of the coffee. That's fine. Um, they try to make it easy. They give you what you want. Okay, so we're going to start with this one because it's on top. This is from Bella Boulevard and it's called Spell on You. And we've got like obviously Halloween kit. Look at the fun little things I have in here for the embellishments though. There's some um, die cut pieces and I've got quite an assortment of them. But then there's also these cute little epoxy stickers. Ah. Uh, yeah, those are adorable. Uh, there's like little witch legs and then there's some potions and a toad and you know, all the cute things. And just an assortment of the little die cut pieces, right? They take the packs and they split them up and get, get an assortment of fun th things. So that's really cool. And 
I usually do go trick or treating. I mean, I usually take my nephew trick or treating. <laughs> You guys know the truth there. <laughs> I usually go to her training with my nephew. I used to take my kids out and my brother and I usually go together and we always dress up. So eventually I will have Halloween pictures. Um, but look at these papers. Like it is a beautiful purple. Okay. So lots of times I will tell you Halloween papers with the purple and orange. <laughs> I get a little over it, right? I don't know about you guys, but I kind of get over the whole purple and orange. And honestly, it never matches with our costumes. I don't think I've been a purple dinosaur or something like that before for Halloween. So it never matches with anything, but these papers are nice. And look at the back. Okay, so if you knew that this, if you did, had no idea that this was a Halloween pack, would you not buy this paper? So nice, right? So it has little owls, bats, and spiders with clouds and stars and moons and stuff. But the back side is this beautiful little gray paper with little um, diamonds on it. And then look at this one. Totally nice, right? Totally not Halloween, but also Halloween. So super fun. You've got little crazy skulls all over it. And like some of it looks like with those little flowers, it looks almost like Day of the Dead a little bit, but yeah, kind of fun. So that's neat. But like, look at this, very not. And then this one, oh, you guys know I'm always in love with these stripes, right? I always love a rainbow stripe, a Halloween ish rainbow stripe, but not, doesn't feel overly Halloween, I have to say. Um, having this little bit of the teal in here with some green and stuff. It, um, it, it I, <laughs> I really like this. Um, and then on the back, we got orange with little jack-o'-lanterns. I wanted to call it pumpkins, but there's different. Pumpkins get turned into jack-o'-lanterns, which then have fun faces on them, right? Okay, so look at this. Like, that could totally be a page that is, like, non-Halloween. Or bring in the fun, bring on the Halloween, right? I've also got two sheets of black cardstock in here. It is some black basil. What's this one called? Um, black op. Oh, I think I've had that one before. Okay, so that's really fun. Um, Halloween. Oh, I want to remember that has this this pattern. Okay, what's in my bonus? Ooh. Oh wow, you guys, this is cool. So in my bonus, this is the add-on embellishment kit. I've got the full sheet of a 12 by 12, the 12 by 12 sticker sheet. So there's border stickers. There's an alpha on this one. There's some little phrase stickers. I use those like they're going out of style. I love those so much. And then some different icons and embellishments. So that's really fun. Okay. Um, what else do we do with the bag this came in? like she's gone and it's gone out oh no it's good I didn't lose it okay so that's just one kit I need to hurry so I get time to actually do some scrapbooking I'm seriously so fun okay so next kit Ooh. Ooh, what is this oh it's fancy pants oh I've grabbed two of them one at a time one at a time look at your turn okay so this one is a fancy pants design. It's called Memory Lane. This is really soft and pretty. Ooh. Um, so let's take a look at the embellishments first because like it's almost like cheating, right? It's like having dessert first when you look at the embellishments first, <laughs> but I'm all for that. I don't know about any of you. If you ever go to eat a Dairy Queen, do you order your stuff like separate or do you order for your ice cream to come out later because I order it together and then I just eat the ice cream first and then I'll eat the food because <laughs> like I'm like is there another way to eat it Dairy Queen okay so there's lots of little um die cut pieces in here also some little enamel dots in the pretty little pink shade that I have uh when you love what you have then you have everything Aww. Okay, so this is like all sentimental and stuff. Okay, that's a moth. That one, mm, that's a no. Moths are creepy. Um, a grateful pumpkin. I love you more. Memory lane. Oh, a little wooden chair, a little kitchen chair. And remember house. Oh, 
Look at the little spectacles in there. And home, and we've got, yeah. Oh, this is sweet. So like if you were doing something like, um, like grandparent or about, you know, family or working on some heritage, this memory lane, ooh, might be absolutely stunning for that. Let's have a look at what's in the papers. Cause I like I liked these embellishments. Okay. So this first paper, nice floral. It has um this, these are kind of brown. They're not like baby poop colors. It's okay. So they're just brown. That brown is fine. You know that yellow color that I'm talking about? It's scary. Uh we got gray going on in the background with a polka dot, a nice plaid here. It's okay. It's not my favorite because it has the little checked lines in it. So if you look really close, it has like those little dash lines. And I'll tell you, like that actually makes my eyes go a little like wonky. I think cameras don't always love it, but it makes my eyes go a little wonky. Oh, but this is nice. What is this pattern? Is this like a acorn? And they've got some of them the right way up and some upside down, I think. Is that an acorn? Do you guys think that's an acorn? It looks kind of like an acorn, right? And then, oh, I like this polka dot. That's really pretty. And then, oh, that's nice too, actually. This feels very retro. Oh, this feels like my childhood. This is the color of my childhood right there. It's like browns with some yellows, a little sneak of orange in there. Oh, that's my childhood. I could scrapbook any pictures of my youth with that. <laughs> because I told you guys I turned 45 today <laughs> that's how old you need to be to to be like that's my youth all right and then we got some brown paper this is basil it's called the dark craft but it doesn't feel like some of the craft paper some of the craft paper tactile that's mm, like a no for me um what do they have in here in my bonus embellishment did I put them, did I put them? oh yes I did Oh no, that's the that's the kit. Guys, I swear I have like one little space in my desk. Okay, no, they were just hiding. Okay. Um hey, let's have a look. It's definitely, it's gotta be these, right? Yes, it's gotta be. Oh yes, memory lane. See. So I've got some of the puppy stickers. Very nice. Look at that cute little rabbit. It's more like a hair, right? Well, it's not even just a rabbit. That's gotta be a hair. Look at those big ears. And it says nostalgia tomorrow memory lane right now i've got the little chair again oh my gosh yeah i love this this is really pretty now i want to like pull out some different pictures and scrapbook something from when i was a kid something at my grandma's house right that's very much the vibe but we have other pictures so that's okay um okay next up let's have a look at this oh i haven't had some of her papers for a while okay guys there's maggie Hope's paper in here so this is called parasol and maggie holmes so what have i got in the embellishments because we're cheating and looking at that first so first off in here i've got some die cut pieces there's a little bunny it has flowers on its head because it's very Maggie Holmes. <laughs> um, there's some pieces in here that are uh, foil and vellum, vellum foil pieces. So that's kind of neat. And then let's see. Oh, I got the word precious. I like that actually. Um, and then, yeah, just some other little pieces, some more flowers. So Maggie Holmes, definitely we're going to look at flowers oh there's more embellishments okay so i got part of the um some puppy stickers as well i love her words actually a precious splendid home you are sunshine oh, that's nice life is better when you're smiling <laughs> isn't that true okay so those are the embellishments that got came with this kit this stuff is called parasol like i said let's put this right here and this first floral, like it's a very bold floral, but it's quite nice. Like the colors are muted, right? It feels like a Maggie Holmes palette. So it's a nice muted color scheme. We've got a um, design on the back. I would never use this. 
I would never use this. I'm just being honest. That's, that's not my thing. That's not my thing at all. But this butterfly one is nice. I would use that. Just like little butterflies and little vines and stuff. So that's good. And then there is a nice stripe on the back. Something about the bows. I think like that's just a, I do not mind the, like the wavy ribbony pattern kind of, you know, it's just, you know, if I used it, it would be like a mat, <laughs> like a photo mat. <laughs> So I'm not saying I wouldn't totally use it. I'm just, I would, it would be sparse. <laughs> be sparse? Sparse? Yeah, sparse. Okay, so we looked at this. Ooh, okay, I like the stripe. The stripe is really nice. And let's see. I went on the back. We've got some pink with little um, hearts. Ooh, this is nice. I would use like this together. And oh, some of that. Oh, yeah, see, this is really nice, actually. I quite like that. Maybe not that one pattern, but the rest are good. And then we've got some basil paper. This is the big swirl. And then on top of this, so this is actually, hmm, somebody was wearing her pink pajama shirt in the picture. Just thinking, we'll have to see. There's one more kit left, right? Uh, what do we have in here? Oh. So in the parasol, I've got this full sticker sheet here. So this is the full pack of little baby puffy stickers. Oh, look at the little baby deer. Oh my gosh. We have had deer in our yard so much this year and they are so adorable. I just love them. So some of the icons, a swan, would it be a Maggie Holmes collection without a swan in it? Like, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> is that a thing? But we've got some of her florals. There's bows, there's lemons. It has very much. Oh, and there's a cute little pair of scissors in there. I like that. Oh, and some and some thread and so oh this kind of has a little nostalgic theme to it too okay so that's really pretty so that is the parasol from maggie holmes one more collection this one is looking like a winner i'm 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 it's looking like a winner for the picture and the story i want to tell and then oh, let's put that back over here and then for the final one that i have here this one, oops, there goes the embellishments. This one is from Pink Fresh Studio. Oh, I do like their stuff. Um, and it's called, what is it called? Simple Pleasures. No, hold on a second. What is it called? I'm gonna have to look on my sheet. <laughs> Pink Fresh, good times. It's called Good Times. Oh, he does say that. It's like really tiny. <laughs> so it is called Good Times. There we go. It's there. And we've got this nice uh, yellow floral. That's good. And then we've got this one with the color in the background. I quite like these look like little lollipop flowers, like the kind that I would have drawn as a kid. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Um, then we have a, I like this plaid. Mm. That's just, it's very geometric. It feels very geometric. Oh, oh, that's a nice, that's a nice stripe. You guys know rainbow stripe. Mm, they called my name. And they did they have to put that on the back, that nice pod? Because I really like that. <laughs> Unfair. <laughs> How could they do that to me? And we got a nice green with some little leaves. And they're kind of almost faded into the background, right? They kind of like disappear. That's kind of cute. Oh, and that's like a very, well, ooh, look at those together. Ah, okay, I'm seeing it. I think a stripe is great because it brings all of the colors from a color palette together, right? So it brings everything together. Yeah, oh, yes, this and this together with mm, that, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now there are embellishments. We didn't even look at the embellishments first. I got so excited to look at the paper. Two sheets of white cardstock here to go with. And like, let's look at these embellishments. Can you believe it? I saved the dessert for last. <laughs> okay. And then we've got ooh, different things in here. Okay. So there are some enamel dots in a bright, lovely yellow. I'm a fan. And then we've got some of the little pieces. There's some 
acorns in this collection too. Some viney leaves. I've got one that says tea time. <gasps> Aw, I love tea actually. That's what I'm drinking this morning is I have green tea in here, but it's like a green tea that doesn't taste like dirt. So, you know, if you can find green tea that doesn't taste like dirt, then it's good. <laughs> mm. And this one is so good. Um, I didn't actually know green tea could not taste like dirt. And so I'd pretty much given up until they opened this one restaurant in my town. And for whatever reason, I was with somebody else. They ordered the tea and then I'm like, oh, okay, I'll try it. Like, and I loved their tea. Like, I think we ate, we drank three pots that day. <laughs> like, It was so good. Plus we were there for a while. <laughs> Warm and cozy memories. We got some, a little bit of floral. We got cozy vibes. That's good. And then, oh, these are like, um, like a textured sticker, I guess, but these are stickers. So that's kind of fun. There's a little bit of, um, foil on them as well. And you can see they've made maximum use of the space by even filling all the little gaps. Love it. Oh, and then there's one more thing in my add-on embellishment. Okay. We'll check this out. This is an add-on embellishment. Check this out. Add-on embellishment. A page of sticker letters. Oh, I'm a fan. I love it. Okay. And so here's the thing. Like lots of times when alphabets have multiple colors, they're like yellow and green and pink and orange and red and like too many colors. This one has multiple colors here. Let me fold it over the white paper. This one has multiple colors, but the, it's subtle. It's like darker green and lighter green and somewhat teal. And so it doesn't feel like overwhelming. I think like if I didn't, you know, cause sometimes you're looking and it's like, I've got three yellow letters together because all of those letters that are left over are only yellow. And then it just looks weird. And it's like, why am I putting one blue letter with these other letters? These ones, I don't think you'd have that problem. I think you could just use them and it wouldn't be a drama. Isn't that nice? Though? Those are cute. I wonder how much fun those are to play with. Like little teeny tiny stickers. Like I'll tell you, I'm a little scared, <laughs> but maybe they're wonderful. Maybe they're wonderful. Okay. So this is really nice. This actually would go pretty well with my other scrapbook page that maybe I will get to today. I said, maybe because like, look at me, I've talked forever already. So Anyways, let's get started. I'm going to use that other kit. The May Holmes was the winner today. And she's actually not the person, like her style isn't always my style, but that one just like, it looks good. It looked like it was going to suit my knees perfectly. That's why I love having options. I love having options. So many choices. You can really, like a certain designer can really change the vibe and the feel of uh, a layout, right? Okay, let's get the things out of the way. I love it. They reused a box. It's a doodle bug box. I love it. Like those boxes. Why would you pay for brand new boxes and brand new shipping things when people send you awesome stuff and you can just use that? Okay, let's put this aside. Hey, yeah, let me know. Do you do you reuse your boxes and stuff? Do you do that? Because I totally do that. <laughs> I love their letters. They always do a good job making the multicolor works as April. <laughs> Mary says, I agree. I only like black tea. I love black tea. <laughs> like that is my that is my go-to. Actually, I love Earl Grey tea. It is so good. The, use the piercing tool, the point to pick them off the back room. That's a good idea. I'm actually usually like, I never think of doing that and I'm struggling to do it. And like, I have like little tiny fingernails because they break off. Like my nails are so delicate. <laughs> They're just pathetic, but um, yeah. And I, I can't do like the thick nails. Like it just, it, it, no, <laughs> it's a no for me. So uh, I just struggle with my little baby nails. And literally they're like baby nails. That's how soft they are. Like they're just soft, like a little baby nail. It's crazy. Part of me never grew up. There you go. <laughs> the rest of me might be 45, but my fingernails are like a baby. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so let's see. I've got this picture of me and my son. I don't have three pictures, but I really think this is the biggest hit for me. The fact that we do this and this is part of our thing. And because I'm in the picture, I think that really, like, even though it's a page with my son and it's about us together, it really unlocks the ability to use all the florals and the butterflies and all the fun stuff. And I think that that, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, when you're scrapbooking boy pages, it's like, a little awkward sometimes but you know you put yourself in that picture and suddenly everything is game <laughs> it's like I can use it all <laughs> and it's not like there's any rules yeah it has a sentimental a soft sentimental feel since April the pink is perfect for that photo right and then bringing in some of the stuff okay and now I cannot forget that stripe so pretty okay so where are we going with this all the fun. I should have looked at their sketch, actually, is what I should have pulled up to see if that was going to help me. Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to cut the, the labels off there. And that way I won't accidentally cut something and have things all the wrong size. So I'm just going to cut the labels off first. Okay, so let me know in the chat, are you scrapbooking today? What are you scrapbooking today? Are you doing load? Have you been doing all of your load layouts if you're participating in our Scrap Happy Load? If not, have are you kind of convinced after hearing about the prompt from today, right? Because the prompt today was so good. I'm like, ooh, that's really fun. And it's really funny because um, as a group, we worked together, like we talked about different prompts. So we kind of wrote the prompts in and some of them we added extra stuff, but then we like for the background, different people went in and wrote the different backgrounds for the different prompts. But having um, a team of people that um, took care of that part is so good. But yeah, like like with the prompts, I like I literally don't even know because we had like a little meeting online and then like half of the work was literally just done right there. And I was like, you guys are amazing. <laughs> you know that saying, two head two heads are better than one. Man, sometimes that pays off. See, I'm not gonna be using this. Mm -mm, that's just a no pattern for me. <laughs> Do you guys like it? Okay. Does anybody like what that's beautiful, Alice? Is anybody saying that? <laughs> Reese says, I'm kind of embarrassed. I didn't realize there's a load happening. That's totally okay. Sometimes that's just not the place you're in right now. It's all good. We do have, oh, we did a new thing this time. We tried something because like, I'm like, Joe, there's got to be a way. I know that sometimes people aren't participating in a certain load. And then when you're getting a daily email every single day, that's like, okay, I'm not doing this. Okay. Like, just like, <laughs> stop harassing me. <laughs> um, and Joe figured out how I could set it up so people could opt out of the load emails while not like messing up your, your membership emails. And I was like, yay, that's brilliant, Joe. So thank you. After all the tech issues we've been having and oh, we thought we had them all solved and then nope, we found a new thing. So I tell you, like, yeah, sometimes. Okay. I love this paper and um, I want to use some of that but obviously it would make a better background I'm gonna go on this one. Oh, that's a good one yes that's nice okay I'm gonna start by putting a little edging around that I got butterflies on the other side so that's fine I was checking the back side really quick. So you'll notice I was like, oh, I'm gonna cut this here. It's checking the back side because it can really matter if like you have a certain pattern that's going a certain direction as to like what you want to cut off. I'm actually gonna cut this like this. So I saved a little more vertically, I think. No, hold on a second. This is gonna be a large portion of this. I need to have enough to do some of that. So I think like this could look overwhelming, but if I use plenty of this pink, it won't feel overwhelming, right? If I've covered it with a bunch of the pink, but not so much that I don't get to use some of that amazing stripe. So you guys see where I'm going with this, right? Oh, I forgot to press something. Hold on a second. Um, there we go. 
Okay, so let's let's dive in and go from here. And then this other page. <laughs> I think I might have told the story of what had happened. I don't remember if I told the story. How long ago was that? Was it last weekend? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I should wait until we get there with the photos. Because <laughs> it'll just be a better story with photos. Okay. So I'm just gonna mat this on here for starters. Um, and let me set these out a little bit. So it's like, I really get to see like all the fun things. There is a little bit of the vellum pieces in this one too, right? So there is a nice big blue flower. Is that off camera? No, not yet. Okay. So we got the word precious. That would be precious to use. <laughs> Um, let's see here. We've got, um, gotta click something here. There we go. Let's go like this and get some, oh, that cute little bunny. Okay. So now I can kind of see all the little pieces that I have. Like, not perfectly, but I better stick this down first. Yeah, so yeah, my other pictures. Let's focus on these ones first. Um, why is this not coming out? This is out too, oh my gosh. Feels like every time I pick up an um, <laughs> adhesive lately, I, I did stock up. I knew it was a load month. And actually I've been doing a terrible job of doing my load. So I am not on track with load. So all of you that are, extra commendations for me but um i knew this month was gonna be a little crazy i have a couple of uh things that i'll be away for Ooh, and we're doing something really fun next friday in scrap happy <laughs> um we are doing a um scrap happy together and it's gonna be hosted by sarah scraps so I talked with Sarah, she felt terrible that she didn't get to do her scrap school last month, but she was not feeling well. And so um, I asked her if she wanted to kind of host this thing because I'm going to be away. And she's like, I would love to, <laughs> like, thank you. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> that just makes things like so much easier for me because I'm not going to be struggling and worrying about that. But I love our happy together so much. I'm, now I'm feeling like bad. Like I'm like, oh, I, I hate giving it up. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm going to cut three inches off of the stripe and I'm going to cut across the stripe, not with the stripe because, you know, I want the actual stripe part. And that's going to help me figure out the rest of my design, but I want a nice piece of that. So now I have my hearts. Oh, Ooh. am I gonna do this in the middle? Or am I gonna do this on the side? Mm. I just love the stripe. And like, I can cut this narrower if I need it, but I at least wanted the option to have a nice thick stripe. Oh, I'm actually not even Oh, so many good options. Oh, and then we have that beautiful butterfly as well. Mm, I did like that too. Lots of good stuff. Um, Donna says, hey, she's watching with no volume. <laughs> okay, well, she didn't hear me, but hi, Donna. <laughs> okay, how do I wave and make it look like not weird? <laughs> I think it's going to be on camera. Hi. <laughs> so funny. Okay. Um, I think I need a little piece. Do I like this? Do I like, oh, I'm looking at it on camera. Actually, that, that gives me a good perspective. I don't like that as much. Okay. And I did, was thinking of doing this with some of this. Oh, that's actually, this feels a lot more like random but I'm quite liking it okay and I'm going to bring in a piece of this 
Hmm. Okay, that's what we're going to do. How big? Not oh, that big. So four, four inches. Okay. Put that. There we go. This just kind of happened and I'm I'm living for it. So we've got some funky layers happening here. And I like it. Cool. I'm gonna stick that down like that. <laughs> you know how sometimes just stuff happens on your page as you're laying it down and this just kind of happened and I'm I'm for it. Okay, so let's have a look. I've got um inch and a half to take off of the pink part. And then I'm going to put this down right to this side over here. And then I don't know if I want that full stripe to be as thick. And I'm just going to take off three quarters of an inch here. And then we're going to kind of narrow this stripe up by a little bit because it looks just a little bit too thick. I'll take three quarters of an inch off of that one too. Okay. And I don't think we're going to go all the way to the edge on that side. So let's take just a little bit off. Okay, so this turned into like a different little layering pattern, but I'm quite um, quite smitten. I don't, yeah. Isn't that cute? Like I don't know. Like <laughs> there we go. I I like it. And so now we get to see all the way down that edge. I think it's good. I don't think that has to go all the way across. There. Okay. So let's put that together before I mess up my layers and be like, what did I do? I had magic. <laughs> and I lost it. <laughs> I ruined it all. Okay. So I'm just going to lift this part right here right now. And then I'm going to stick this down. So, no. Oh, gosh. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I like to just play and sometimes fun things just kind of show up. And this is kind of how this felt. <laughs> like something fun just kind of showed up. Um, like as much as I like putting something in the middle and having that frame around here, I think this is a really nice twist on that. Um, Something else that I actually love to do a lot is to take a exacto knife and go around some of the flowers and have them lay over some layers. This one doesn't lend itself as well. Like this flower could, this flower could, but like I think once I've, well, this one's gonna get covered by some of this butterfly stuff, right? So it won't turn out as good. Okay, let's put this down before we forget where it goes. And I'm not going to have a ton of stuff left over from this kit, right? Like, because this one ended up being heavy on pattern paper, but I'm okay with that, right? Like, I'd rather have a page that I really love than trying to rescue and save paper just so I could make another one. <laughs> I know. I, I was like, take a photo with your phone for reference so, you, so that you don't forget. I know. I definitely have done that. <laughs> definitely done that. Okay, so we got some little pink hearts there. Do I want to put two rows maybe? Those little pink hearts. Do I like how 
thick that stripe is. I want it just a little tiny bit thinner. Yeah, it's kind of just very much a eyeballing what feels right when you're scrapbooking, right? Like, you know, that needs to be thinner, that needs to be thicker. And sometimes I can't explain why I want something that way, but you just kind of know that that's what you want. Yeah, it's better. Okay, so I'm going to stick that down too. Sometimes when I flip over my pattern paper and I see the pattern on the other side, I have like this little moment of panic. It's like, am I, am I gluing the proper side? <laughs> I, I've absolutely forgotten what I'm doing in the middle of gluing things down. <laughs> this April. Oh, there's so many distractions, right? Ooh, this actually would be really a good thing to um, ink along that edge. That would look really good. I don't do a lot of inking, but... In this case, um, okay, I think this one will work for that. I don't do a lot of inking, but I think this will just give me a little bit of extra separation between these layers that I think will look good. So this here is evergreen bow. It's a distress oxide, which, you know, isn't always the greatest choice when you're inking edges because it can uh, get a little messier and spread around a little bit if you're not, uh, if you're touching everything. <laughs> <laughs> the stress oxide is a little bit fun for that, but I've already um, done the, the adhesive. So um, maybe there's just a little more here that it's just a little more. Yeah, uh, I think this is a good idea. Okay. And I don't feel that I'm going to have to like ink everything else to make it good. Like this one, I guess, could have been inked as well, but I wouldn't ink anything else. So I'm fine. There we go. That's good. So yeah, I have a base now and then I can add a sweet title. I want to have some room to be able to put my words. I'll probably just write them right here on this pink stuff because that seems like good. And then I can do like a little bit of a something here, a little something maybe here or here. If I do here, then probably here. Okay, so I like this little piece. And we've got Oh, I like this blended, but I really love this precious. But if I want to bring more of this gold in, I don't know if that's going to layer in there. If I've got enough stuff for layering, what do I have? What do I have? Precious right over top of the flower. Will that work? Can you read it? Kind of. I think that's okay, because I could always use this other one instead. I was so staticky. Life is better when you're smiling. How true is that? Okay, I'm gonna actually stick that. Okay, did I stick my picture down? Oh, no. Okay, I'm gonna not stick the picture down to the edges, and that is intentional. Not worried about it curling. All my pages end up going into albums eventually. <laughs> After they sit in stacks for a really, really long time, they will eventually find their way into an album. <laughs> but let's be real, they sit in stacks for a very long time. Um, so the having um, the edges gives me the chance to kind of tuck still so I can still choose whether to overlay or underlay, I guess, <laughs> to, to, to tuck. <laughs> It's a good candidate for sewing on the feel, at least, but your patterns have enough going for you. You don't need it. It would be a good one to sew. I, uh, I don't do a lot of sewing. <laughs> that's, um, I don't, I don't know that that's a big secret, <laughs> but Alice doesn't sew very much. 
you know, I've done, I've done projects that counts. I've done projects. Okay. I like this life is better when you're smiling, but we're actually going to use it as a tucking layer right here. And I better decide that it's going there because once it touches that photo, it's staying. I can't move it. Evelyn says I'm not one to sew it either. <laughs> uh, April says my sewing machine is still in the box, but I got it for sewing on pages. <laughs> I do have a sewing machine set up. Oh, I don't even know what color I have on it right now. Okay, I'd have to look. Uh, it's black. I got black on it right now. Not that black would be terrible, but I do have black on it right now. <laughs> I do the fake ruler with a fine tip marker dashes. Oh, I have even easier than that. Like way easier. I can do some sewing on here. I'll do Alice sewing. I'll do cheater Alice sewing. <laughs> I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> okay. Oh, and you guys, like last time I was telling you, I had lost my big roll. So I had to buy a brand new roll of adhesive, like the foam tape, because I love using those foam tape. Well, guess what turned up the other day? So now I have two giant rolls of foam tape, but like it's going to get used. <laughs> so I don't feel bad about that at all. Because, you know, but yeah, it had totally gone missing. <laughs> it's like, where did that go? I know I had it. <laughs> it was somewhere. Okay, before I stick this down though, um, I like to just take the edges and just like, roll the edges up just a little bit. It just gives this extra little bit of dimension that you don't need the foam tape for. But yeah, just like roll your edges up. So if that's not something you do, I just think it's pretty like when you have the little leafy edges that are all sticking out like that. I love that. So um I keep looking at this one rose that they have on here. I'm undecided as to whether I think it's pretty or not. Okay, so you guys help me decide. Is that rose pretty? Or is it weird having all of that gold in it? It's something about the gold. I don't know. <laughs> I'm undecided as to whether I think that's like pretty or not. I love the rolling too, says Ellen. See, yeah, you just like roll it a little. It's like, it just feels right. Okay, now attaching vellum, always a uh, somewhat tricky <laughs> thing. I think what I'll do is I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of um, adhesive and I'm just gonna stick it on the back of this. I think that's gonna be okay. And I think, I think that shows up good enough. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to line it up with my little roller thing just underneath where the letters are. And I think it's gonna be enough and hiding enough. Uh oh, my brother's trying to call me for my birthday. Uh, can I call you later? <laughs> there we go, there we go. I put it on do not disturb, but I like, you know, he gets through. <laughs> so. It is my brother. I do have two of them, but um, yeah, there we go. So I like the precious, I like the splendid. I need more stuff. Ooh, what is this? There is a something or other. It looks like a garden shed, a hundred guinea stamp iron. I don't know even what it is, but it's like this little piece of ephemera. <laughs> It's cute, but I think it could be like a good little base for me to build another little um, cluster right here, right? I think that would be a good cluster base. So that's what I'm gonna do. There is also a bow. <laughs> And another little thing. I don't know that I like this one as much. It feels like it's taking away from my story too much. It's white on the back, so I could just use it as a little journaling square if I wanted. <laughs> there is that, right? They're not the boss of me. I can use it however I want. <laughs> okay, so I like this little bit of foil hanging down. What else do I have for embellishments? Laurel, I've got the big ugly flower. I mean, I've got that flower that I'm not sure that I like. 
<laughs> Evelyn says, I love those giant rolls, right? Love learning how to do clustering. I need to keep trying. I find that when you have more layers, then it's good. I don't know that I like this bunny rabbit that much. It's okay. It looks funny with the flowers in his hair. Like that's just a little, that's a bit much for me. You know what I would like more is that cute little deer. It's really little though. That's my concern. Um, this phrase is catching me a little bit. It says, you are sunshine, which, you know, in my head should say you are my sunshine and it's really wiggly and wiggly only fits in certain places. So, um, I think that one's going to be a pass. I do like this. I'm going to add, ooh, that S is separate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to go here. I got to stick this down too. And then I just need some little tiny pieces. And this will be like done except for journaling, right? And then if I added another like circular-ish thing, so I've got this circular-ish thing and this circular-ish thing, obviously it's an oval, it's not a circle, but if I add another little circular-ish thing to this, that would be actually a good thing to draw because though like that shape will draw you into it. So um, let's put my splendid on here. There's a little tiny little in the eye here. This is me I'm trying to figure it out with my fingers because <laughs> I don't go for the little pokey stick, even though <laughs> I had a reminder. All right. And this feels like it needs a little something. Okay. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go into that other kit that had those little phrase things. I love those phrase things. So let's go into that other kit that had the phrases. Was that, which one was that? That have the phrases. Okay. I don't know, but let's have a look in this one. We're gonna borrow. I think that's totally fine, right? It's mine. I own it. I'm allowed to breathe deeply. That that's not what I need. Warm and cozy, cozy vibes. There is a little memories in here. It looks awfully white now. but splendid memories together. It's like, that was made to be, right? Um, A little bit of foam tape on that maybe? Okay. So I'm actually curling the edges on this as well, um, at least on the one side. And I'm gonna have it kind of, oops, too far over here. I'm going to have it go from high to low or low to high, I guess, on the other side. And so I'm going to have this other side raising up, but I'm going to have it low on this side so it can tuck underneath the splendid. And let's get some, get a piece of on there. Right now, this is the Gina K uh, designs and he's from ThermaWeb. It has like a little tiny dots, like, like little clear dots. I don't know if you can see that almost not quite um but yeah it has like little tiny dots it's okay um it's not my go-to adhesive so it's one that I'm testing right now to see if it's something that I would like to use more of okay so that turned out good I just needed another little little word thing here right I just needed something so I borrowed it from the other kit and that's fine okay but I do like that little deer it's just adorable. So it's going to go on to here. Um, no, it's going to be here. It's really cute. And I don't always get to do little cutesy things. Like it just doesn't always feel natural to me, but he feels, he feels natural. So there we go. And then if I bring this little yellow flower, just up in here, and I bring a little pink flower in here and 
might be might be all there's a cute little bee though sneak a little bee in there um we'll hide another one up in here okay so that feels fine i feel like i did good there is another little round piece so when i was talking about a round piece there is like this little round one and this little round one and so when it if i when i'm adding my words i'll probably add one of those little round pieces in with that because that's just going to feel better having like that element of round and round and round, bring it across. So that's just how my brain works. Okay, this is good. This is good. I'm liking it. So we have the picture with me and Ryan and my precious word, life is better when you're smiling. The splendid memories that I borrowed from the other kid, Shh, don't tell. And then, um, yeah. So I don't know if I'm going to stick this on here, but I'm going to like just put like the tongue little bit of adhesive and stick that there so now I'll be able to choose <laughs> I'll be able to choose if I want it there or not okay I'm going to throw these other ones back in here this means that it is time for our draw yay oh you guys my dollar store thing is kicking butt back here let's go back to my other camera and we're going to do our draw Okay, put these back in here before I like open the next one and be like, how come there's no there's no embellishments in this kit? <laughs> that could happen. I'm not saying it's ever happened before, but that could happen. Um, let's take off this and this. Those are all the extra pieces. This is the layout. Um, and we're going to do this. And there we go. So the butterflies are perfectly placed on the paper. Couldn't have placed them better if they were stickers, right? They're so spread out. So good. And the deer is so cute. Should probably just pass the rose along. If you have to think about it, that heart is probably not going to be something you love. There's too many other supplies we love, right? I know. It's like, do I like this or not like this? Like, I, it's like, it's close, but like, mm, some things, right? There's just some things that don't feel right. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And look, I didn't use that paper at all. Mm, surprise, surprise. <laughs> but I have space to like add some journaling up in here. Um, oh, I was going to show you guys the stitching. I forgot. Okay, after, after. We're going to do our draw first because, you know, that's fun. Um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's like, good point, Ruth. If you, if you have to think about whether you like it, maybe you don't like it that much. <laughs> okay, so I'm pulling up a random number generator on my phone. And let's have a look here. Um, participants, we have 28. One of them is me, which means we have 27 in the house today. Super good odds. And I'm going to hit the generate button. And it went to 18. Oh, good. I get to count. <laughs> Seventeen, eighteen. Lisa Van Olden. Lisa Van Olden, you are our winner of our kit today. So you are going to receive this kit, the Flavors of the Month kit. They even have this very, very one set aside just for you. And you will get that from the scrap room. But you have to email me to claim your kit. So Lisa... So please email me, Lisa. I'm going to type this here in the chat. My, my, my mouse was going crazy. Uh, uh, I won't do that. Send a message to alice at alicebull.com. There it is in the chat. So you can just click it. You should be able to click it or copy it and paste it or whatever. And you will be able to get your kit. So just um, maybe put your like mailing address information in there. And of course, your, your email, I'll have that. Um, and they will send you out your kit. So congratulations to Lisa. Has she commented here? Did I miss? 
So hopefully she's hearing this and will claim and get her stuff so that she can get her stuff. Yeah. There we go. That's our winner. Yeah, it's super fun. Like how nice that turned out. So good. So good. Yeah, I absolutely love it. So <laughs> um next I have another uh batch. I have a batch of photos. Thank you. You guys are so sweet. Yeah, it's like happy birthday. I got my little uh, shiny little thing going over there. It's like holding up good. Good job, Dollarama. <laughs> good job, Dollarama. Um, but I have my pictures that I have printed and it has a story. So I'm going to tell you the story before I sit down with the pictures. Um, <laughs> it starts with a big, <gasps> um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so we went on a flying adventure. Jo my husband Jonas has a glider right now, and it is a glider that has a little engine that pops up. So you pop up the little engine and you can take off from the ground so that you can go up all by yourself when you're gliding. And normally gliders, you need to usually go and be part of a group of people because you need people that run tow planes and you need people that have tow winches or you need to like it's it's a process you get people that hold your wings sometimes little gliders like it's a process right and you know they have to put the planes together after they drive them to places like it's a lot well his plane yeah it can self-launch so so it has this little engine that pops up. Well, we went off on this adventure. Um, one of our friends, he turned 80 years old. Uh, and so he was hosting a fly-in event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to be towed up, says Evelyn. I went gliding, but we need to be towed up. So his friend was hosting his own like pancake breakfast fly-in event for his birthday. And he has a grass strip that he keeps like um perfect for for landing and everything so we went to his event and here's a picture of us in the glider and it was cool in the morning when we left so I'm bundled up in winter clothes like we're I look like I'm like stuffed in there right like I've got stuff up to my chin but I was not gonna be cold <laughs> so we go and we had to do a lot of motoring because in the morning there's not that many thermals that are rising up and um that ends up um you don't get a lot of lift right so we knew we'd be motoring a lot of the way but we'd motor and then he turned the engine off and it would go and like suck back down into the body and then he would um and then we would glide and the glider has a 41 to 1 um glide ratio so say for every foot that you're falling you're going 41 feet forward so think about it like if for every mile that you're going down you're going 41 miles forward kind of thing like if you think about that <clears throat> well with this you know, we eventually got to his place. So here's a picture of his field and the grass part here, like the green grass part that you see running across here, that's his actual runway. And he has a bunch of hangers here and he's got hangers on the other side. And he even has um, a tower. I, I, I don't think I have a picture of the tower, but he has like an airport tower that he got when they were decommissioning one somewhere. And so he was able to get that and bring it to his place. So it was really cool. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we flew there and we landed on his grass strip. Everything was good. We're hanging out. We're doing all the things, uh, you know, here's us having the pancake breakfast, right? They've got that all set up. And then, um, he is a member of an old car club as well. So 
he's obsessed with Rolls Royces. He actually has several Rolls Royce cars, like old classic ones. And um, so some of his car club buddies came and brought their cars. So we pose for pictures and he has an airplane that's up on a post and it actually works as a weather vane. So it like turns in the wind. It's a whole airplane up on a weather vane, like coolest thing ever. Like this guy is just like, my husband looks at him. He's like, oh, I want to be like Howard. <laughs> like, so cool. Um, we got to go up into his tower and look around at all this stuff so you can see the lineup of the cars like the the cool cars that people brought on display and there was even people that like there was a bunch of people that flew there and some people actually flew there in helicopters as well and so this is Howard this is our friend Howard and he was going for a ride a quick little ride in one of the helicopters so that was kind of fun to take a picture um with we took a picture of us when he was going for a ride in his helicopter in the helicopter with this guy and then um because we brought a glider to this thing it attracts a lot of attention so a lot of people are looking and so we have a picture of us and you can see all the people gathered looking because everybody goes around and looks at all the planes like it's just like oh what kind of plane you got what kind of plane you got well with this like the glider gets a lot of attention so there's people always like looking and and examining and checking it out so we had to have a picture of that and eventually Howard came over and he was chatting with us over at the plane so this is my husband in his yellow Hawaiian shirt <laughs> it's like I will always be able to spot you in a crowd <laughs> and our friend Howard with him and we did pictures with him as well so that was good um, so yeah, it was really good. And then we waited until a little bit later into the afternoon. So it was like one o'clock or so, so that there'd be more thermals, right? Because you need the, the ground to be a little bit warmer so that there's like rising air. So we take off and we're on our way home and we're motoring and we're motoring and we're motoring because there's just not a lot of lift. And we had just flown over his mom's farm and, you know, we're mm, half an hour drive from home now or so, maybe a little less, but, you know, less for flying. Um, it's not super fast running on the motor, but, you know, you're, you're in a glider. You're not go there for speed. <laughs> uh, and then the motor goes, put, put, and he says, oh, I guess we're out of gas. <laughs> And so I'm like, oh, I take like a couple big breaths, like, and I'm like, gliders fly without motors all the time. He tells me this. He's like, they fly without motors all the time. Else, most gliders don't have an engine. And I'm like, oh, but like, you know, the whole time you're flying, especially with a glider, you're like, where would we land? Where would we land? For me, that's a little bit like panicky the whole time we're flying. I'm just going to say, where would we land? Where would we land? If the, we didn't have an engine right now, where would we land? <laughs> and because the the good glide ratio, like you can get to a lot of places and you have a lot of time, like you give yourself a lot of time. <laughs> April says, I would be on anxiety overload. Evelyn's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so we're landing in a field. Like the option is road or field, but looking at the, the wingspan of the plane, it's 50 feet wide. His old plane that he had was like 35 feet. So it could land on a road pretty well. Like we, that, that, um, that was a, a possibility. Glider's a little bit wider. You're going to hit like a road sign. You gotta, you're already watching for power lines. Like there's things, right? And, you know, some of our ditches are a little more grown up with trees. So, mm, okay. So we're going to land in fields. And he's like, oh, I could land in that field. He looks down, he points to this field. It is covered in hay bales, like covered in hay bales. And I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> There's way too many bales in that field. So uh, I'm like, nope. You got to find one that does not have so many bales because the, the farmers right now are taking the bales off. Like they're just getting the bales finished and they're starting to take them off. But some of them take their time with the, like the removing the bales, like other things, whatever. 
So we find a field that's a lot more clear. It has a couple bales left in it, but it's mostly been cleared and it looked pretty flat. And, you know, we look for power lines. Like, we got time. We got plenty of time. The big round bales. Exactly. It's the big round bales. <laughs> Yeah. So you don't want to mess with those. It's not like the little tiny square bales where, you know, <laughs> as long as your wheels don't hit them, your wings are going to be fine. No, no big round bales, big hazards. So we land and I am, uh, <laughs> this is him trying to convince me things are fine. <laughs> that smile has a lot of gritted teeth, <laughs> like, but this is how I was really feeling. Like, did this really happen? Can you believe this? That this really happened? <laughs> Can you believe that this really happened? Um, yeah. So that uh, that really happened. This was my face. Like, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> and um, here's a picture of us sitting in the field or the plane in the field. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here to tell the story. Now, this is something that's happened and he has landed in fields. I've landed with him in fields before, but not in a glider, not in a glider and not like when we had to, when we chose to and we knew the field and, you know, yeah. So this has to be a page because there is a fantastic story, right? <laughs> so yes, glider in the field. So here you can see like the little, um, the little engine that pops up with the little propeller and then the the gear at the bottom actually raise up when you're gliding as well. Um, so he just like dials on the phone and he calls our son Ryan to bring the gas. <laughs> hey Ryan, pop over to the hangar, grab the thing of gas and the thing of oil beside it and bring that over to me, will you? <laughs> so here comes my savior, my son. I'm like, thank you. And I'm thinking, good now I'm out like that's it I'll just ride home with Ryan it's all gonna be good because now we're getting gas and uh I can just I can just take the car home right well one of the things about gliders <laughs> is there are certain weights and balances that you have to deal with oh my camera is like there we go um there's certain weights and balances so for my husband to um to take the to, to take me in the plane he has to take his ballast out because normally he flies by himself so he actually has a ballast weight that sits in the plane so me not going home with him was not an option I had to go home with him <laughs> like, no no <laughs> I know it's like can't you just take extra gas with you Yes, but you only have so much weight that you can take. And with me, with him, like two people, I'm not tiny. Like we were kind of like at, at our weight. So we couldn't hack a bunch of extra stuff. And, um, and because we were landing and taking off on a grass strip, having less gas for the takeoff is actually better, right? Because then the plane is, doesn't need quite as much. And like, you know, you've got a little more friction when you're taking off from a grass strip. Like when we take off in Whiteport here, it's, uh, it's off a, um, uh, <laughs> off a runway. So glad you have a lot of trust in him. I do. He has done a lot of flying and like, he was so like, whatever, we just land in the field. <laughs> like, <and> I'm like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so yeah um so he filled up we we filled up with our uh oops wrong way we filled up with our gas in the field we took off my son took a great little video of us taking off from the field and uh this is us back at the hangers. You can see us the going in the hangar door and I'm like I have never been so happy to be back in my life <laughs> <laughs> actually that's not true there was one flight that was even way worse <laughs> like we're uh, until let me tell you like when when you say that landing in a field as a emergency landing is is not as bad as another flight there you go <laughs> like <laughs> Alice sighs a massive sigh of relief so I printed all of these photos so I printed like the whole story right and I thought that would make a really fun 
uh, page with either flip flaps or like an accordion that you can like pull out the whole story from. And so that's why I have all of those pictures and I'm going to put them all on one page so that they all tell the one story. Yes, definitely. I know Alice sighs a massive sigh of relief. I actually filmed a couple of video little vlogs so that I could include that as well. So I actually have those and I need to put them into, like I have to take the pieces and put them together so that I make one video. And I'll add the photos and stuff from that day and maybe do a little voiceover. And then I can print a little QR code to put onto this layout that I'm gonna make as well. Cause I think, um, yeah, this is a story that needs to be told. <laughs> <laughs> from my perspective like his perspective is so different he's like yeah like well we're in the glider we landed in the field <laughs> he's like gliders land in fields all the time Alice I'm like yeah well and the whole time like I said every time as we're gliding like he would he would only let us get down like we would motor up and he would only let us come down to a certain height before he would re-engage the engine and so then the engine would go and then start up. But every time, you know, in that, you know, time, it's kind of like, is the engine going to start, right? Like you can't count on that a hundred percent. So every time that he was going to restart the engine, we've already looked to see like, where would we land right now? If that engine doesn't come up, where are we going to land? So it's not like it's not part of it, but the fact that it actually happened, that was the, that was the worst part of it. <laughs> so it's not like I was thinking that this could never happen, but um, yeah, it did happen. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And actually I was looking at this kit this one here, the one I just stole stuff from actually, um, from Pink Press Judy. And I was thinking this would be like a great paper for this layout. So I'm thinking that that's what I am going to do is I'm going to use some of that to make my page for this. But before I start diving into this, it's one thing to have life jackets on your boat. It's another thing entirely to end up in the water wearing a life jacket. Absolutely. <laughs> that actually reminds me, my husband introduced me to this YouTube channel. It's called something like wavy boats or something. Wavy boats. I don't know. It has a massive following on YouTube. And the guy goes and he films like with a nice camera. He films boats going through areas where they don't know what they're doing <laughs> like, and so they're going over bumps and they're just like flying off and people are falling out and they're flooding their boats they're getting emergency services and I tell you in all of these videos nobody wears their life jackets and they are in places where they should be wearing their life jackets like because they don't know what they're doing <laughs> I'm like every time I see it and I'm like it's one thing to know that you can swim but can you swim when you have a concussion <laughs> can you swim when you bash your head like <laughs> there's a reason that life jackets are designed to hold you up even if you're not conscious <laughs> oh boy yes the wavy boats I think it's called wavy boats if you ever want to see like you know and if you ever want something that entertains your husband, <laughs> it's like, hey, honey, I found this thing on YouTube. <laughs> yes, it was, it was shocking. <laughs> it's shocking to see. And like, they're, 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 they're all flooded the boat and there's like stuff like spilling out of the boat, life jackets spilling out of the boat. And they're still not scrambling to put them on. I'm like, now is the time, you guys. Like now is the time. Get them on. Like at least now. It's maybe like before was the time, but like now is the backup time. Oh my gosh. So funny. Okay. Well, I am gonna use this paper. Oh, before I get started on this, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, before I get started on this, I wanted to ask you, 
So our, do you have anything for show and tell? Please remember, I do post this on my public YouTube. So this does get posted publicly, but if you would like to show and tell and show us something that you've been working on, maybe it's load layouts, maybe it is cards or something else. Maybe you like sewed something. You're like one of the people that can actually sew stuff. Um, you know, anything, it doesn't have to be scrapbooky. If it's creative and crafty and you're like really excited about it, then show us. Um, yeah, if you would like to share something, then just maybe uh, turn your turn your mic on and then I'll know and I can bring you up so that we can all see what you've been making. So we can do some show and tell. <laughs> I know, I love seeing it, so. So hopefully somebody will be brave and be like, I actually made a thing. <laughs> and Marsha's putting her hand up. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, let's bring you up. Hello, Marsha. What have you been making? Hello. Um, I, it is not done yet, but, um, it has started <laughs> it is well into it. But, um, so let me see the stick, the title is still on like a ruler, <laughs> but, um, you bring me tomatoes grandma <laughs> so my my two-year-old grandson loves tomatoes and I grow cherry tomatoes and some other tomatoes and they didn't do that well this year we, we had a really dry summer but um but there's been enough so that every time I get there before I even get out of the car, he's running over. You bring me tomatoes, grandma. He says it's so cute too. It's tomatoes, grandma. So, uh, so I had had to take it, had to do that page today because that's my success for the summer. At least I had enough tomatoes for, for Luke. So nobody else in their family. Um, well, my son will, he'll eat tomatoes. Um, his mom hates tomatoes. And so she's just, like flabbergasted that he is loves them so much but yeah. yeah isn't it funny like we think that we get like so much from our parents but sometimes it's not like food related stuff right. at all. like sometimes, yeah. sometimes it is but uh sometimes it's not mm. like my son joe for some reason likes onions and like both myself <laughs> and my husband do not like onions so yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so can you hold it up again? Too. That is a beautiful design. Is that the background paper, like with the colors and stuff? Yeah, well, the the background paper is it's a Vicky Booten with the circle. Oh. It's got the circle and the thing. And then this is another paper over the top. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, the like this blue comes up to here. If you can see it. Okay. Um, and then so I just use that line across, and then this is like the the color transitions there so it was a nice line to put it across mm -hmm. um yeah and then uh and you so got then, your three pictures in there yeah yeah which I I didn't even realize that was the prompt to tell you <laughs> I still have, but you can see he's got a little Ziploc bag with tomatoes and like he just I I just got out of the car and handed them to him and he's eating them he would have them eaten before he even gets to the house so oh, which is not very far so yeah but yeah I really this paper actually I was just kind of going through and like what paper do I want to use and this one popped up and and it's so fun it's okay. so bright and I, love, I yeah. love the strip and the way that you've kind of layered the pictures across too that's like super nice yeah yeah, yeah. and then I yeah so it's a, co it's a combination of Vicky Booten and Chamel which is not your usual combination but this green they has like a lot of color right they right like yeah and these um there are little plus signs here which doesn't really matter but and on this paper there's plus signs so it just happened to that just happened to <laughs> be. I'm like oh well these definitely go together so all of the elements the designers use right yeah I love it yeah. thank you so much for sharing this so You're beautiful welcome. thank you so beautiful um let's see here um I keep seeing Andy's name at the top, <laughs> so I'm like, but then she still has her microphone up. So if anybody else would be willing to share, very great colors, it's very cute. I just love hearing little stories, like that's so fun. Just like the little guy wanting his tomatoes. So funny. I love tomatoes. Actually, my tomatoes are terrible. They, my plants, 
I did so bad. I had a greenhouse this year and I ruined everything. I ruined everything. <laughs> it, I think it got partially underwatered for a couple days and then it got like too hot once and then it got too cold. <laughs> actually no it got too cold in the beginning and then like I, I I like everything you can do wrong with a greenhouse I did <laughs> it was like my my new thing this year we got it for our anniversary yeah. and um 25 years was this year so silver and the it's like um galvanized like metal right so it's all silver color <laughs> so that was our <laughs> silver anniversary present and I ruined everything that went into it <laughs> like it was so bad so I gonna... had, I had one tomato plant that was in a, like an, um, it's a planter probably about five, four to five feet long and maybe two feet wide. And the plant actually was way too, grew way too big to fit in there. It was the most gangly plant and it was propped up so that, cause it kept tipping over. And so it was like in a cage, but the cage actually bent and it was tied and propped and it, it looked like a mess. It was my best tomato plant of the whole summer. <laughs> that and one that I hadn't actually planted, but it planted from seeds from last year was a volunteer plant. Those two did the best out of all of them. Well, so. I probably had like plants. And I'm like, well, I'll just put them in my flower bed. We'll see how they do. Normally they grow great there. Um, so I moved them there and it was just a little too late. And then I looked at the one day and I'm like, oh, there's three tomatoes on one of the plants out of all of them that I had planted. I had three little tomatoes and I'm like, okay, well, I'll give them a couple more days. We'll see if they can grow a little bit. And we had a sudden frost and killed the everything. Like they were just all dead. And I'm like, well, that figures. That is just about par for the season this year. So no tomatoes. So I didn't get to make my salsa this year. It was really sad. For somebody that doesn't like onions, I like to make my own salsa so that I can like control how much onion goes into the salsa. I do a lot of red peppers. <laughs> so yeah, really fun. Okay. Uh, anybody else that want to share? Did you make anything? Do you have something? Can you like hold up parts of something? You got a great picture, the story that you're going to tell. Feel free to share with us. Go ahead and like turn your mic on. Just say, hey, I'm here. I got something. Okay, I have something else that I can share while I wait. So feel free. <laughs> Just works as Kim, nothing fun. <laughs> I feel that pain. I feel that pain. Um, I have something fun. Um, I brought out an episode of the podcast so the podcast is back I've been getting asked like I keep getting these questions like is the podcast coming back Alice are you done with that like and I'm like I was just in a not good place and I wasn't feeling it so I have a special episode that came out today for my birthday I'm like if I'm gonna like do something let's make it extra fun for me so I released an episode today and it is uh, five tips for returning to scrapbooking after a break and breaks can happen for all kinds of reasons. Um, for myself, I, um, I was struggling. Like I just, um, when my friend had passed away last year, she helped me with different things and I just was struggling. So I talk about that a little tiny bit, but mostly, um, yeah, and I've actually had other breaks too. So like, that's just the one that's kind of been significant in my life right now. But in the past, I definitely take breaks from scrapbooking a lot of times. I don't scrapbook a lot in the summer. So even like that seasonal break that I would normally take can be hard to tie back into once you're like, oh my gosh, well, I got to organize my room first and do I, wear, do, do I even have adhesive? <laughs> like, you know, it can just feel like a little overwhelming coming back into it if you've been out for a little while. And so I share five tips in the podcast. It's a short episode. All of my episodes are generally short unless I have a guest. And then I just kind of let it roll because it's like, oh, I got a guest. Let's talk about stuff. And actually, um, I already have my episode ready for next week and I do have a guest and actually my guest is, uh, she's not a scrapbooker. So, ooh. 
<laughs> something different. But my guest is my friend Cher Kretz, and um, she wrote this book called 30 Days to Higher Hopes. And um, it's actually like a journal that you write in, and she gives you some prompts, but she also gives you like a lot of open space, but like the way she talks about higher hopes, it, it, like, honestly, the word hope was a little, I don't know, like, I, I feel weird about that word. <laughs> like, <laughs> I felt weird, but she described it in such a good way and the way that she brought that and the way that she has um, made the little stuff in here. I really thought that that was super good. So I'm really excited to put out that episode for next week. It will definitely be a slightly longer one. Like I know, it's still under an hour guys, like, you know, longer for me is like, <laughs> is that, but, um, I really, um, yeah, I was really excited to talk to her. She had some really interesting insights and we really talked about how this relates to scrapbook journaling, like this kind of journaling, like where it's more like, emotionally mentally inspired versus storytelling and we kind of talked about some of that as well um yeah I thought it was really wonderful actually so I'm excited to bring that to you for next week so yeah Kim says I'm so glad the podcast is back I've missed it thank you so much you guys are so sweet like honestly like the comments that um I received because when you podcast like you don't necessarily have like a comment section where people are interacting. You're like, do people even listen? <laughs> like, does it just download to their phone? Like they subscribed and then they download it, but don't listen. Like, I honestly didn't know. And the number of people that have asked me about it, I've been like, wow. Like I was really touched by that. Uh, Debbie says, yes, I'm, I'm organizing after summer break but it's 82 degrees and sunny. I may wait a few weeks, right? <laughs> right? When it's nice, you just kind of, you got to enjoy it now. Um, Lindsay says this, I'm the same. After summer, I feel like my scrap stuff is exploding everywhere and I don't know where to start. Well, it doesn't help that like, you know, like any like memento kind of things over the summer, I'll kind of stash into the space. Oh, that just, uh, that goes in my scrapbook room. Um, yeah, I guess that just goes in my scrapbook room. So then at the end of the summer when you want a scrapbook again, um, yeah, then it definitely will, um, it, it's like uh, all those extra stuff to deal with before you feel like you can even scrapbook. Yeah, um, I'll definitely talk about where you can get the book. So Kimberly, it's on Amazon, actually. I ordered, if you look, if you look for 30 days to higher hopes or even like higher hopes, I think will help you find it. And it's, um, it's called solution focused journaling. So she actually has spaces in the book for you to write, um, in the book. Uh, and I had to tell her, I actually told her after I'm like, you know, I struggle writing in books. <laughs> like I have a hard time writing in actual books. So often like I take this stuff and I take it into my own journal and she says, <laughs> she says, I actually do too. <laughs> And she wrote the book. So I, I thought it was like this funny. I, well, I'm like, I wish I had recorded that part because I thought it was like a really funny, that would have been like my little PS section at the end because I love having a little PS on uh, the podcast episodes. But yeah, I thought it was really funny. And like just some of the ways that she approaches this, it really, um, yeah, it gave me some new perspective on the word hope and stuff and like what the whole purpose of that was because it felt like a word that doesn't, maybe didn't feel, it feels either overly significant or not significant at all. Because if you just hope for something to happen, like, okay, like <laughs> you need to take action, right? And and then there's like the whole hope versus hopeless. I'm like, oh my gosh. So anyways, it was a great conversation. I'm excited, but yeah, Cher Kretz, what's her name? So that is her book. And, um, I, I know her, I meet with her like every, every single week, actually, as part of a mastermind group and yeah, like, it's just been so great seeing the stuff. She actually is working on a book and she has a couple of other journals that are just journals. They're not self-guided. So this is her first self-guided, um, journal that she's released. And she actually has a podcast, um, it's called, 
it's related to parenting, but it's really about the solution focused um, journaling. Hold on a second. Um, the focused, okay. Her website is the focused mindset.com. So there you go. I feel like I've done good. Told, told you about stuff. Uh, yeah, but it's great. And she has like some bonus things and stuff. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I saw it pop up on my podcast app, but haven't listened to it yet. So as I know, yeah, it's just a short one to get me back into it. And it was, I, I did my own editing. So if the editing isn't as smooth as normal, it's because Ryan didn't do it for me. <laughs> but I was just like, I don't want to delay. I need this to go up and I don't, uh, I don't want anything to stop me. And then I was able to include it into my Friday five and everything too. So that was really fun. Okay. Last call. Anybody want to show us anything that you are working on that you've been doing? Do a little show and tell. Show and tell is fun. Marsha made it really fun, you guys. So, okay. Okay. Well, then I don't know that I can dig into all of this right now. My friend is taking me out for lunch today. So I'm super excited. So that will happen after. But I did tell you that I was going to show you my cheater trick for sewing. So Oh, let's do that instead because I don't I'm a little worried about diving into this project because got lots of pictures just sticking them in will be interesting um so oh and this podcast is called the scrap happier podcast I don't know if I said that I'm so terrible at advertising my stuff it's just like find me by accident <laughs> the scrap happier podcast um yeah, I'm really glad to, to be back at it because I do, I love it. And actually, if you don't listen to like podcasts on phone and stuff, you can actually listen to it right on the Scrap Happy site. So you just go to scraphappy.org and click podcast in the, in the little menu and the episode should show up there. I did publish it last night, so it should show up there. So that is good. Okay, I'm going to put this onto the screen share so that I can um show you my cheater trick for jerk for um doing stitching let me grab some stuff here um share where's the working where's it going oh i think i did the wrong thing <laughs> yeah it's like okay Alice do you even know what you're doing at all yes 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 I do this one I gotta click this one oh see I knew I know I'm good at this <laughs> okay so my cheater trick that I learned ages ago to add um to add sewing because I am not the gal that sews. Let's be real. That is not me. Um, my cheater trick is with a white gel pen. Now this is the gel pen that I have been crushing on for a while now because it, it really works. <laughs> it is a jelly roll. It is a jelly roll 10 and the 10 is basically a 1.0 like tip, right? It's like kind of a little bit faddish on the end. And honestly, with white gel, you pretty much end up going with something that's a little bit thicker like that. It just, it's, uh, it's what you need. Now, something that I always like to have when I'm using a white gel pen is some kind of paper where you can like get the ick off of the pen tip so that it can write smoothly. You just have to have a little spot to kind of like get that tip flowing once it's flowing and like these ones are actually really good they're really not super painful a lot of them are so painful why why do they have to be so painful um but then so the tip is that you just draw straight lines you don't have to like dash 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 like it, when you do the dashes it just never actually looks like sewing right so you just draw a straight line with your gel pen and if it's not making a nice line like you might have to like repeat it or whatever but you just draw your line so now it looks all good with a nice white line and then here's the trick part you take your paper piercer 
And then you just quickly jab some little holes along the line. So now you've got the line, but you have this. Uh, let's see here. Finish this up. And it totally looks from a distance like stitching because you've got the little stitch holes. And it's way easier. <laughs> it's way easier than actually sewing. <laughs> and because you're not doing like the little dash, 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 like, because you know, when you do the little dashes, it just never looks that good. This to me it looks pretty good. I'm like, ah, oh yeah, I cheated. <laughs> I have looked at my layouts and be like, oh yeah, of course I cheated. Surprising. Not really. Because <laughs> that's just what I do. So I'll do another one down here. And like I said, like every time you start with like your gel pen, like just make sure it's rolling and then always like roll it somewhat slow. Slower is much better. You got to keep that tip rolling. It's important with the gel pen. Keep the tip rolling. Okay. White on white is not the greatest, but on this page, it'll look fine. And so then just, yeah, like just take that little stabby tool. I call it the stabby stabby tool. Technically it's a paper piercer, I guess, <laughs> but there we go. And so now it looks like I've done a little bit of sewing on this page, just added that nice little detail to it. And yet I totally didn't because I cheated. So that is my little tip for cheating for sewing because <laughs> I don't sew. <laughs> yeah, but I find that works way better. And if you just have like your little tool handy, so good. Also those jelly rolls, like I have not had like them be like bad for me. So that's, and they're cheap. They're cheap. So they're really good. Okay. Well, oh, Lindsay's off to go see her family stopping for lunch. Happy Thanksgiving to my fellow Canadian scrapbookers. Yes. I, um, I get two Thanksgiving dinners this weekend. We get one with my in-laws tomorrow and then we get one with my family. And I'm going to tell you guys a secret. My mother-in-law said that she's making chickens instead of turkey tomorrow. I'm sad. <laughs> I'm sad. I'm like, what? I won't tell her that, right? Because like, I'm grateful. She's like making a beautiful meal, but chickens are not turkey. <laughs> like, but my mom's cooking turkey, so it's all going to be good. Anyways. Thank you so much for joining me for this happy birthday edition. See the sparkly lights? Good job, Dollarama, man. That did, they did good. Um, for my birthday edition of this Scrapbook Live, if you're looking for the amazing scrapbook kit like what I use today, then please do check out the Scrap Room. Their kits are very reasonably priced. They're one off. Like you can you can sign up to get them lots of them, or you can get like one at a time totally up to you they make it very easy and the flavors of the month kits are amazing and like look what you can do with them like so gorgeous right they're so well curated and I really love their kit so go to the scrap room at scrap-room.com check out the kits congratulations to our winner I hope you've emailed me already Lisa Van Olden winner of today's kit so you will receive a kit from the scrap room as long as you've emailed me if you haven't, quickly do that. <laughs> and we will get you hooked up with your free kit from the scrap room. We will be doing this again in November. So watch for the dates. If you're not on my email list, you can join that at scraphappy.org slash subscribe. I guess it's like this. Yeah. On camera. Anyways, um, the scraproom.com. Yes, that's um, yeah, scraproom.com. Scrap dash room dot com is for the for the kits from the scrap room and then to get all my email lists you can go to scraphappy.org slash subscribe and there you will uh, be able to sign up for my emails to get notified about things like this get my friday five sunshine emails and um 
yeah so that's all of the fun stuff and scrap happy members always get invited automatically so um yeah that's a lots of good stuff thanks for joining me today i hope you have a fabulous weekend if you're canadian celebrating thanksgiving enjoy the weekend it should be beautiful here our weather is beautiful here today i'm so happy about that it is wonderful Evelyn says, I'm so happy I made it today. Me too. Okay. Have a good day, everyone. And happy scrapping. Hey. Oh, and I'm going to go post on my Instagram. So if you want the recipe for my favorite icing, I'm going to be posting that here in just a few minutes. So called butterfly icing. It's perfect for angel food cake. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye.